Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in Dentistry and more. Today we have irrigation and intracanal medicaments from endodontics. So this session uh, explores uh, various uh, reagents used um, as irrigating or intracanal medicaments during root canal therapy. So what are the ideal requirements for an irrigant? So it should be having broad spectrum antimicrobial properties and it should aid in debridement of the root canal system and should be able to dissolve the necrotic tissues or debris should be having low toxicity level it should be a good lubricant so it so it should be having low surface tension to flow into inaccessible area so there are many accessory canals uh, present which are basically unnoticed in preparation so a reagent with low surface tension would be able to flow into those inaccessible area then it should be uh, able to sterilize the canal and it should prevent uh, or dissolve the smear layer and it should inactivate endotoxin so what are the basic functions of these irrigants so the functions to remove the dentinal shavings by physical flushing should increase the efficiency of instruments and it should dissolve the necrotic tissue it should remove debris from lateral and accessory canals it should be uh, germicidal as well as antibacterial it should be bleaching action irrigants with lubricating agent further increase efficiency and opening of dentinal tubules uh, by the removal of smear layer. So these are the functions of irrigants. So what are the factors modifying the activity of this irrigating solution? The first one is a concentration. So the tissue dissolving capability of sodium hypochlorate is higher at 5.2 percentage. Second one is a contact that is to be effective these irrigants must come in contact with the substrate so more contact more effectiveness and presence of organic tissues so organic tissues will always hamper the process so organic tissues must be removed for effective irrigation then quantity of the irrigant used so increase in quantity will directly or proportionally improve the effectiveness then gauge of the irrigating needle 27 or 28 gauge this is gauge sorry is preferred for better penetration in the canal then the surface tension should be having low surface tension so that it moves uh, well within the canal temperature so warming the sodium hypochlorate increases its efficacy study has proven that then frequency so more frequent better are the result then canal diameter wider the canal better is action of irrigant then age of irrigant freshly prepared solutions are more efficient than the older ones now moving on to the commonly used irrigating solutions so chemically non-active solutions are water saline and local anesthetic so chemically active materials they include alkalis chelating agents oxidating agents antibacterial acids enzymes and detergents so the first one is alkali so the most common alkali is sodium hypochlorate where 0.5 to 5.25 percentage concentration uh, is used for the used as a irrigating solution second one is a chelating agent that is edta uh, which chelates uh, the calcium ions that is ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid then oxidizing agent they are hydrogen peroxide carbamide peroxide antibacterial agents are chlorhexidine and uh, bis dequalinium acetate then the acid 30 percentage hydrochloric acid enzyme the streptokinase pine and trypsin detergent sodium laurel sulfate so we'll start with the first one that is sodium hypochlorate the mechanism of action so the reactive chlorine in aqueous solution exists in basically two forms 
the first one is hypochlorite and then the hypochlorous acid so the state of available chlorine depends on the pH of solution that is above uh, 7.6 it will be alkaline in nature so it is mainly hypochlorite this OCL form and below this pH uh, it is more of acidic because it is going down the pH is going down that is HOCL so the presence of high percentage of free chlorine and sodium hypochlorite is responsible for breakdown of proteins into amino acid okay so that is how it works as a reagent or irrigating solution so the pH of commonly used sodium hypochlorite is 12 more of alkaline at which the OCL form exists this hypochlorite so the hypochlorite which dissolves necrotic tissues because of its high alkaline nature so this is a chart which shows the efficacy or the factors uh, affecting its efficacy when the volume of solution if there is a heating or time of contact is high the efficacy will improve whereas uh, storage time and uh, chemical agents are involved the present then the efficacy of the soda hypochlorite will decrease so more storage means a decreased most storage time that means freshly prepared sodium hypochlorite will be more effective than the uh, stored one so the advantages are it causes tissue dissolution it has antibacterial and also bleaching action causes lubrication of canals it is very economical and easily available but the problems with sodium hypochlorate because of its high surface tension its ability to wet dentin is less which is quite irritant to tissues if extruded periapically it can result in severe cellular damage so it is very uh, problematic to the surrounding tissues and it can also irritate the gingiva if it comes contact with because of its caustic nature it can bleach the clothes it has had a bad odor and taste and vapors of sodium hypochlorite can irritate the eyes and it can be corrosive to the operative instruments the second one is hydrogen peroxide we commonly use 3 percent solution so what happens is it rapidly dissociates into water and nascent oxygen so on coming in contact with tissue enzymes uh, catalase and peroxidase the nascent oxygen produced which act as a bactericidal and this effect is a transient one and diminishes in presence of organic debris so if organic debris are present the effectiveness of hydrogen peroxide will be less next is a uh, chlorhexidine which is optimal antimicrobial action with ph 5.5 to 7 commonly used in two percentage concentration so it acts as a bacteriostatic agent at low concentration whereas at higher concentration it causes coagulation and precipitation of cytoplasm so it is a bactericidal at higher and bacteriostatic at low concentration so the advantages are a two percentage solution which is used as a root uh, canal irrigant then 0.2 percentage it can be used in controlling plaque activity then it is more effective on gram positive bacteria than gram negative one so it is basically not considered as a main irrigant in standard uh, root canal procedure it is unable to dissolve necrotic tissue remnants and it is also less effective on gram negative so actually this was a disadvantage it is basically works on gram positive and anaerobic uh, bacteria's its effectiveness is quite less next is a chelating agent that is EDTA and other chelating agents like citric acid polyacrylic acid are used for this purpose basically chelating agents are chemical compounds that react with metal ions to form a stable water soluble complex so they are also known as chelants or sequestrating agents so these chelating agents have a ring like center which forms at least two bonds with metal ion allowing it to be excreted so it creates a complex 
so basic functions of this ADTA is lubrication emulsification holding debris and suspension or smear layer removal the uses are it has dentine dissolving properties that is the most unique property of EDTA it helps in enlarging the narrow canals makes easier manipulation of instruments and reduces time needed for debridement so next we have the intra canal medicaments so medications they basically destroy the remaining bacteria and also limits the growth of new arrival of bacteria they are useful in treatment of apical periodontitis so if there is inflammation which is caused by over instrumentation so eugenol is a commonly used uh, intracanal medicament in uh, low doses it inhibits prostaglandin synthesis it inhibits nerve activity it inhibits white cell chemotaxis whereas a high dose it directly induces cell death and inhibits cell respiration. So it is used as an intracanal medicament, used as a root canal sealer, and it also used as a temporary sealing agent. Next, we have the intracanal medication phenol. It has strong inflammatory potential, so at present it is rarely used as an intracanal medicament. Whereas a liquefied phenol that is carbolic acid which consists of 9 parts of phenol and 1 part of water which is used for disinfection before the periapical surgery it is also used for cauterizing tissue tags that resist removal with brooches or files. Now we have the recent one CMCP that is camphorated monoparachlorophenol it is probably the most commonly used medicament in endodontics presently. Even though its use has decreased considerably in the past few years. So its composition two parts of parachlorophenol and three parts of gum camphor which uh, give rise to CMCP. It is used as a dressing of choice of infected teeth. Now the formocresol. The CMCP uh, has asked alone as a short note. Next uh, medication is formocresol. It contains formaldehyde as its main ingredient and is still widely used as medicament for the pulpotomy procedure in primary teeth. Its toxic and mutagenic properties are of a concern. So that's its side effects. It is a little bit of uh, toxic and mutagenic in nature. So it's commonly used in pulpotomy to fix the uh, retained pulpal tissues so composition it has a 19 percentage of formaldehyde 35 percentage of cresol and uh, 46 percentage of water and glycerin next one is a calcium hydroxide uh, which is very commonly used uh, medication that is used in weeping canals and treatment of phoenix sepsis in resorption cases or for apexification during pulpotomy for non-surgical treatment of periapical lesion or in cases of direct and indirect pulp capping as sealer for obturation to decrease the post-operative pain after over instrumentation so functions it inhibits root resorption stimulates periapical healing and encourage mineralization uh, that was all about uh, intracanal irrigants and medications. This was very very brief uh, explanation or detailing of the irrigants and medications. It was in fact a very big chapter. Uh, there are many things which can be added as extra points. So this is very commonly asked essay question for to write for an essay. I think all these uh, compressed bullet points would be sufficient sometimes the single solution or a single irrigant can be asked as a short note so that was all about the intracanal irrigants and medications i'll come up with a new topic in operative dentistry and endodontics thank you